Hi everyone, it's Helen Griffin here and thank you for joining me today. So we're going to be making this little lovely clutch handbag today using one of my new dies. This is the Hexagon Clutch Box die set and it's part of my new um, special celebrations die collection that was just released a couple of weeks ago. So um, I'm really excited about this one. This is definitely one of my favourites. So I've chosen this one to be the first tutorial on how to use the dies. So um, it's actually a really good size. It measures five just over five and three quarters let's turn that over so it measures just over five and three quarters um by four and one eight so that's five and three quarters exactly there i think yes it is so it's a really good size and it's got a beautiful um detailed clasp element there and there's a few options on how you can do your actual clasp but today we are going to be just doing a simple one because i have some velcro here to keep this box closed and it's a really good size. Right, so let's get on with showing you the die set that you get and all the bits that you get in the set. So this is a bumper collection of dies. Um, we'll start with the outline one first. So you need to cut two of these to make the outside of the box. There's gonna be on one of the sides, you're gonna to have to trim off a couple of pieces, but you can use the off cuts here for the mats Let's pop that aside so you can see the rest. So these are the mat dies for the front and the back. And you get a layer of three. And normally we do um, a layer of two. But we thought three would be good for this one. So you can really bump up your options. So we've got three there. That's for the, um, the front lid here. Just for the front section. And here we also have dies for flowers and leaves for decorating so something that we've done with the entire celebrations collection is to make sure that you have leaves and flowers in every single die set so you can really make them pretty without going to another um get a, get another separate die set just so you can decorate them but they all they are all going to work together so um these are the three dies sorry the four dies we've got two leaves two flowers and here we have this lovely nifty thing here so this is going to cut little slits in two areas just at the top of your box here so you can use this handle die here to create a handle and it's hidden inside and inside here I've matted it already in there and um, we'll be using this die here just to mat the inside and if you don't want to use a handle at all you can use this same one here just to mat there mat there as well um, you can actually this will actually go through a double layer of cardstock as well so you can actually have the mat on there so but I'm more of a simple sort of girl so I do like it more contemporary and simple less work and these are the clasp um, dies so we have this tiny one here that's going to give you tiny um, screw like um, bag hardware so you can cut out as many of these as you want you can cut additional ones so um, this is part of the clasp mechanism and this is the other half so this one will fold in half and fold through this one here and it will also give you an imprint of the of the screw detail just there so today I'm just going to be showing you a simple um, way to put these together and there will be a separate video on how to do other versions of the clasp. So let's get on with making our bag. So I'm going to be needing this one out first. So let's grab my piece of cardstock that I'll be needing. Okay, so I'm going to be using some Hunky Dory cardstock. This is the Adorable Scorable and it is absolutely perfect if you have any of my um, dies already this cardstock will work absolutely beautifully with it so as you can see it cuts it scores it folds and it just looks it just works and looks beautiful it works really well so i definitely recommend you check out hunky dory adorable scorable and it is available at craft stash as well so I'll make sure that the colours I've used today are linked but do check out the other colours I think they come in packs of 10 okay so I'm going to be using just this one first I'm going to be using my Gemini so let's get our sandwich put together so I have my cutting board here I have that at the bottom and then I will layer on my plastic shim 
my magnetic platform, my, my, my magnetic sheet, sorry, and just the top cutting plate here. And I'm going to feed that through the machine. So this die does take an A4. So because we do want a nice big sizable bag. Okay. As you can see, that has cut and scored really well. Let's pop this aside. So as I was saying before, um, you need an A4 die cutting machine for this one. I mean, we could have made this really small and dinky so it would fit onto um, a smaller platform, but I do like I do like the small bags, but I also like to make the larger ones. So this is a really good size. I mean, there's plenty of bag dies out there that that are smaller than this so I thought it was time we had a nice good size one and you can get a good size um, little gift in there as well so just this one here this one goes out the other way that's going to create the gusset and I am going to do some trimming on this one as well because I have one already prepared this is going to be the back of the bag so I'm going to be keeping this flap here and this base piece here so I need to lose the bottom so this will be the front I need to use, lose the bottom and the top so don't worry about this section here that you're going to cut off you can use that for your matting so there's going to be minimal waste so I can grab my scissors you can use a paper trimmer for this so I'm just going to quickly use my uh, scissors here there we go same for the bottom. There we go. Okay, so all we have to do now is assemble this all together. So I'm going to glue this section onto this section first. So let's grab our glue because it's this this does have a slight coating on it. So it may take a little bit longer to dry, so if you have some red tape, which should be something like this, then you can use that just to glue it together. I'm going to uh, just find the flap. I'm going to do this flap here on the gusset. I'm going to be using glue, and I'm just going to have to be patient while it takes a few extra moments. Okay, so my um, my camera actually stopped filming and um, this is actually a day later because I'm now editing the video and I realised a whole chunk of the most important part of the video was not there. So um, I have some different colour cardstock here because I'm not going to make another one in the same colour. I always try and make something in another colour. So that's why we're using the pink. This is a pink hunky dory adorable scoreable. So let's get back to um, how to make this and then after this little section you'll go back to the blue bag again. So if you're easily confused that's why my my camera decided to stop filming and I didn't notice and I just you know carried on so anyway let's get this glued together so I'm going to start off with this side first Um, I think I ended off uh, trying to glue this side to this side but it is easiest to glue all of our little sides together and then glue the box together just like that so let's get all of our sections glued together so I'm going to go for the, the little side flaps first just to get each half Put together so um, I am using cosmic shimmer glue it does dry quite fast but because this has a coating on the cardstock it is going to um, take that little bit longer to dry but but not like loads just a little bit longer Okay, so that's those two done. If you push it down quite firmly, it should just stay where you need it while it just sets. And then we're going to do exactly the same on this side as well. Just going to put glue on both sides here just to save a bit of time. Oh, I don't need to do that one just yet. Get carried away with the glue there again. So we can add some more if that does dry. I 
Okay, so I'm now going to add some glue to this side here. Okay, so you can actually do as I'm doing here, or you can do it bit by bit, one at a time, and work your way across adding it together. So I'm going to have to turn this one over just to make sure it's in the right place, which it mostly is. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to add some glue to this flap here. I'm going to work my way around now. Just add a little bit more to this one. It's still quite wet. It hasn't hasn't dried yet. So let's pop this in together. This is where it can get quite fiddly. sides and then press it all into place go so you can either do it the way I just done it or you can just um, not pre-assemble half of it first and um, if you find if you think this the way I've just done it was a bit fiddly don't do it that way just um, stick the two sides together at the side here and then just slowly work your, your way around um, gluing the tabs individually and if you do it that way it will not be as fiddly but um, if you're confident in getting this put together then you know by all means do it the way that I've just done it so just squeeze those in slightly and close that together so um, that's that quick demo on how to get that glue together and now we're going to zoom back to our blue bag and um, I'll see you in a couple of moments Okay, so my camera did actually stop filming there, but this is what it looks like put together. And I did make, make one slight mistake before putting it together. I should have used this die here to make my holes, but I always make a couple of mistakes when I make things. Um, so take um, this die here. I'll show you how to fix it. So take this die here, cut it out from the same colour as your cardstock, and run it through with this die, and you should get this. This will be for the handles and take where did I put it? I'll put it down, here it is and take this die here, we're going to make our handle next so take this die and I'm just going to cut a piece of card from here and I'm going to grab in my smaller plates now um, these are for the Gemini Junior I don't have a Gemini Junior but they do fit through my larger Gemini um, if I put them in um, sideways that way so this is really handy if you have the smaller dies and you don't want to wait for a big sheet to go all the way through. I can be quite impatient, so let's cut as one of these pieces and then I will show you how to put the handle together. So I've just grabbed my little scoreboard as well. Okay, what we're going to do is just score at half an inch, turn it around, and then score again at half an inch. Okay, that's all the scoring needed. You can actually just fold it by hand, but I like to be quite precise. So I'm going to fold these upwards, just like that, and then this needs to bend round. So to help that bend, I'm going to take my bone folder again. I'm just going to curve it around, just to help it curve, without it um, getting any proper um, hard creases in there. There we go, and now we have a nice 
curve. So let's take this piece here. So we're going to add glue to the top ends of those. And then we're just going to feed these through. I do have a better version. Here we go. I have this is a these holes are more central. I did cut it twice. And just pop that through to the other side and then press down. Do exactly the same on the other side. And then get that central. I've got dried bits of glue all over my fingers now. That's one of the uh, hazards of paper crafting with glue. Spend the rest of the day picking it off. Okay, that's our handle piece done. So if you actually manage to remember to put your holes in the top, you'd be assembling it without this extra piece. So let's get this glued on. Just gonna close this for the time being. Hold the handle and pop this on. You wouldn't have this trouble if, like I said, you, rem you remembered to put it, the holes in first. Okay. Now that's that on. Oh, leave that to dry. Okay, for mats, I've gone for silver and the same colour cardstock. You can layer up in different colours if you like. I like to repeat my colours throughout my projects. So I've used the larger one and the next one down. So I haven't used the third matting die. I've just used the outer two. And that is for this side, the bigger one and the smaller one. And I've already done the back already. So let's get that popped on. I'm going to have to buy some more glue soon. I think I've only got about a third left in my bottle, which is a good warning sign that I need to think about buying some more. Okay, so that is put together. Let's get this one on. Okay, so now we need to work on our clasp, but before we do that, I want to put together um, the bag to an actual closure. So I have here some um, super slim Velcro pads. So um, I'm just looking for my scissors. Oh, they're right next to me, they're here. I'm looking right over there for them. Right, let's chop this off. Okay, so this is really easy to add on. It doesn't have to be complicated. So I'm just going to peel off, peel it off the backing sheet first. It's up to you how you do it. I like to just do it this way. Okay, so these Velcro pads, they're from Amazon and they weren't very expensive. I think they were $8.99, but you do get a hundred of them in this pack so yeah a hundred sets and they are very slim absolutely perfect for box making I've been using them on gift bags I've been using them on everything so I expect to see these again very soon right so let's peel off the backing for this right so this is where we have to be super careful I'm going to be lining up this edge here with this edge here just like so just get it all lined up and Make sure it's all lined up here, use your fingers, and then press down. Okay, so that is now closed, so we can now just open this up very carefully. It hasn't properly been um, pressed down yet, we've only just placed it 
there so I'm using my bone folder just here and with this one I'm just going to press it down there we go so that should give it a good bond now right so let's close that and now we can decorate our bag I mean this looks pretty just as it is you would you would literally get away with with that just as it is so we're going to make it pretty now so let's grab I've cut everything out ready so this this is what the um the foliage will look like once you've cut everything out so we can now assemble everything and I want to add some dimension so I have this is by tonic um I don't know where it's in stock at the moment I'll double check um it might be back in stock at craft stash I'm not sure but I will do my best to find um a link for this because I use this a lot you get this one nice big big ends there and then you have a good um size um of these balls would you call these balls some sort of uh round thing anyway so i'm use the larger one here so i actually got these when i won paper craft designer of the year 2016 this was actually one of my prizes and yeah it's just been absolutely indispensable i absolutely love this because i love flowers i love shaping and things so just press it round little circles so you end up with that i mean it will flatten out as we work and just leave it it will sort of relax a bit so I've got the smaller one here, so I'm going to use the, turn it over and then do the same, start in little circles. You can just leave it like that, but I do like to shape the leaves as well. If you're using super thick cardstock, um, you may get more creases. Uh, this is, I think it's 350 GSM and this is just a thinner pink. This is, this is just standard pink cardstock, it's not the hunky dory. So I tend to use the thinner cardstock for the flowers. so let's get these glued together I'm gonna to have this two as a set and um, I think I may have cut one a little too large I will cut a smaller one of these just to fit in the top corner or I may just even go for a more simple look and maybe just have one at the bottom and then we can move on to our lovely decorative um, clasp and I'll be using a silver mirror card for that so I'm going to be using these leaves here don't really have to think too hard about where to put these leaves either okay so I'm doing this decorating first with the flowers you're probably wondering why I haven't gone straight to the class but it's just because gluing these on is going to give the um the flowers a chance to settle down because it's quite glossy it does take a little bit longer to dry so well, that looks really pretty I'm just going to stick to one big flower at the bottom just so that it's a bit of a change from the other bag I made for me it gets to a point where I just start making everything exactly the same I don't know if you guys are the same but I do tend to just start copying the same design because I really like it and it looks good but then I can't have ten of, ten of thing ten of the same thing looking the same okay so let's move that aside now I'm gonna add just some Nuvo drops these are gloss white I'm just gonna add a center to the flower that needs to stay flat otherwise you're going to get a funny teardrop shape on your Nuvo drop so I'm gonna leave that there just to dry so let's move that aside and we're going to work on our clasp now so you're going to be needing this one here with the two crosses and this one here this teeny weeny thingy looks like a some sort of tool or something so I've got some mirrored cardstock here I think that should be big enough 
glue everywhere. It's just coming off me. It's like I've been sunburnt. Okay, so a bit of washi tape. Okay, so I'm going to run that through the machine and then I'll be right back to show you how to assemble it. Sometimes if you drop them like that, they just fall out and you don't have to get your pokey tool out. Okay, let's pop these away somewhere. Say so these are tiny, so I've got a little magnetic sheet beside me so I don't lose a thing. I have a very big habit of losing my tiny dies. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to fold it so that I'm going to lift this up so you can see. I have, I'm going to have a fold mark here and a fold mark there, close to where the circles are. Just like that. Same on the other side. And then I'm going to just bend it, but I'm not going to um, make a hard crease because I want it to be rounded just like that. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And then I'm going to feed that through here from behind. Just like that. And then I'm going to glue it on the underside. Okay, so let's add our glue. To the silver patches, it's really easy to get carried away and glue it to that side. Add it to the silver part. And then feed it through the hole. And because it's glue, you can then just move it around until you, you're happy with the position. I've made a bit of a mess here, but I'm sure you'll be more neat and tidy than me. If you beg to differ, let me know down below if you think you could do a better job or a worse job. Okay, so where's our bag? Here it is. It's right at the other side. Right, so we're going to pop that on there and that will be our closure or our faux closure. center nothing like a wonky bag okay so that is it so there's plenty of room in there for some lovely treats or a little present or a scarf perfect for giving gloves you know the, or even um jewelry a lovely jewelry box like a necklace box would fit inside there if you're ever thinking that you want to give um, a necklace or a ring or anything like that and you don't really want to wrap it up in wrapping paper it will fit perfectly inside here with a little bit of tissue, tissue paper. It would look beautiful. And even for Christmas, you could just make a Christmas version of this as well. There's absolutely loads of different um, occasions you can use this for. So that is the um, hexagon. I'm still learning the names of all these. The hexagon clutch box bag uh, die set. So um, I absolutely love this. I really do. I could literally have so many different versions of this on my shelf all stacked up nice and neatly and i would probably look at them all day i really would so i would love this i would love to receive one of these as a gift i would be so excited i'd be more excited about the box yeah i would definitely be more excited about the box and what's inside so yep yeah, that's just me so thank you for joining me today um if you enjoyed this video do give me a thumbs up and uh, make sure you subscribe my name is just in the corner there you can subscribe there i am really close now to reaching 20,000 subscribers and i will be doing a giveaway as well once i reach the 20,000 so um, i'm just so excited because I've, I've been on youtube um three years now and i've already reached 20,000 mark uh, very close to so thank you so much for joining me today and i'll see you again next time